Turing for Kevin Smith. Um, I'd like to introduce my counselors first. Paul DePaulo is here in the State House with me. And Councillor Juvenville. Good morning, Councilor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, anyone here? Terry Kennedy is here. Okay, and, and we have um, Councillor Kennedy. Eileen here Duff in the is State here. House. Now, who do we have on Zoom? Eileen I don't Duff. see anybody. Eileen is here. Okay. Where are you? Okay, and, and Councillor Duff is somewhere out there on Zoom land. Yep. And um, I will um, so is begin Herbert. the hearing. First of all, um, I would like to welcome you, Attorney Smith. And um, now that I've introduced the council, why don't you introduce who you brought today? Uh, thank you very much, Councilor Devaney. I brought with me today my wife, Jennifer. Um, welcome. My, and my witnesses, uh, Peter Flynn, Stephen Pascucci, and Peter Freeman, who's joining us. Th thank you so, for thank you for. Um, for all your attendance. It's a difficult time, I know. So I'm going to read first the letter appointing you from the governor. Dear counselors, I am pleased to nominate Kevin T. Smith to the position of Associate Justice of the Land Court. I submit this nomination, excuse me, excuse me. I submit this nomination for the advice and consent of the Executive Council pursuant to Part 2, Chapter 2 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I am enclosing the nominee's resume for your convenience. Sincerely, Charles D. Baker. So having said that, I, I want to, I say this all the time, but I get no respect if they don't do it. Please, in respect to the nominee, this is the most important day of his life, that we are respectful in all cell phones away, turned off, and not on the table. And um, we, about 10 years ago, we voted to swear people in, so I'm going to do that. And that will be you as the nominee and anyone who plans to speak today. So. Tell us the whole truth. And... Thank you. Yep. Okay, I will. Um, I will begin by calling your list of witnesses in the order that you've given me. We first have Peter E. Flynn, Law Office of the Peter E. Flynn, in Saugus. Welcome. Permission of the council as I can remove my mask. Please take off your, we're, we're six feet apart, probably 20. Okay. <laughs> take it off for two minutes. May I commence? Yes, please. Oh, We're waiting. thank you. All right, thank you, <laughs> Governor's Council, for having me here. Uh, it really is an honor and a privilege to be here on behalf of Kevin, and it's an honor to be here in front of the council. I read about you all the time. You're very famous, and you do great work. Uh, I've known Mr. Smith for over 30 Excuse years. You tell more people that. I'm sorry? <laughs> Would you tell more people that? <laughs> <laughs> I will do so. No, it is a pleasure being here. Thank and you. Uh, in five minutes or less, uh, I can report to you the old, the not so old uh, and the new concerning Mr. Smith as a practitioner of law. Okay, as a five minutes, we don't have any rule here about how long it takes for a person to speak. Okay, thank I, you. What I will do is I'll move it along, and if you, of course, if you have any questions, no, I'll, take your time. I'll stay right here. Uh, about the old, it goes back a number of years when I was a special assistant attorney general. I was assigned to the uh, attorney general's office. I was in private practice. And I had an eminent domain case that I was defending against uh, Mr. Smith. 
uh, and it was an eminent domain case that involved a, a, a host of issues and land development, land use, zoning, what works on a property, what doesn't, uh, the bundle of rights. It had just about everything you could ever imagine. Well, what I had was because I was working for the Commonwealth, I had unlimited resources and I had some of the best experts that you could have in the business in either defending or representing a plaintiff in an eminent domain case. And what happened in this case, as we went down, it was an uh, eight day jury trial in Plymouth Superior Court. And when I started the case, I was convinced that there was no way that this property owner being represented by attorney Smith was ever going to get a million dollars for this property in Rockland. Uh, the trial started to impanel the jury uh, and we were off to the races and our case went in. Uh, we, we, the uh, plaintiff uh, went first. Mr. Smith put on a, uh, a very presentable case, good witnesses. It went fine for him, but we had all the answers. There was no way he was going to get a million dollars for this property. And so we started our case and I put a witness on who's a, a technical person, very good in the real estate and development, things like that. He presented himself very well and I sat down. 10 minutes later, Mr. Smith is up still going with the witness and I'm listening and he was making some headway. And then 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes later, I stopped looking at the clock because I'm starting to run into trouble in this case. So about an hour into the case, of course, I'm cognizant of my jury. I don't show my dis my nerves or my problem, but uh, what happened was, is Kevin Smith basically tore this witness apart and with another witness, basically the same thing. He did it very nice, gracefully, uh, with good demeanor, uh, totally prepared, and he knew his stuff. And when the case was over after eight days, I was sitting there and I was very impressed. And I said, I, I'm going to be shocked. Jury went out. They deliberated for about six hours. They're not going to get a million dollars. Not, no way. They got a million one hundred thousand dollars. That's what he did. Now, go ahead ten years, and I'll just jump ahead uh, to a case. I used to have a condo in Martha's Vineyard, uh, down the vineyard. I had a condo there for thirty years, and as typically condo associations. They get themselves into trouble sometimes because not everybody understands uh, how they're supposed to function. So we had a problem for about a year. Uh, and I said, you know what? We got property rights problems. We've got problems on here. Let's call attorney Smith. We called attorney Smith, got him involved in the case. Uh, and two weeks later, two weeks later, the whole problem was solved. And the board of directors, 42 units from all over the country, they were thrilled with Kevin's performance. I tried to take credit because I was the one that called him, but uh, he did a, a great job. And now the present, just last year, the highest eminent domain uh, settlement against the city of town in the history of the Commonwealth was a case against uh, the city of Waltham in which I represented the Stigmatine Fathers. Behind the scenes, I wish you could have seen it because behind the scenes, we had a, an excellent team uh, and we were looking for uh, well over $25 million on the case. And behind the scenes, we had contacted Attorney Smith and he stepped in and helped us with all the 40B, the regulatory issues and things like that. So as he's behind the scenes, making us all look good, uh, we were able to obtain a judgment of $30 million, which was featured, featured in Lawyers Weekly uh, over the last, it was in for six months as the highest settlement. So I will end with this. Of course, unless you have questions. Uh, Kevin Smith practices law and he does it with pizzazz. He does it nicely. He does it intelligently and his demeanor is second to none. And if you're an attorney and you're appearing in his courtroom, he understands that you really do this and you practice law uh, and he will recognize that. And uh, for the land court, uh, I can't think of a, 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 a better choice. And I sincerely hope that the governor's council uh, consider him and, and nominate him for this position. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any councils have any questions for attorney Flynn? Yes, sir. Council it, it, Kennedy. It's great to see you. Uh, you, I know you do a lot of this type of litigation uh, that you describe, 
Uh, and I assume that the reason he can afford to be a judge had something to do with that $30 million judgment. Uh, he the was joke. actually, in fairness, not a participant in that component. You didn't get that part? No. You didn't, didn't cut him in? No. Bob, I don't know if I can vote for him. No. He did all the work, he said, right? Know. Yeah. He did a substantial amount of it, yes. Okay. Great to see you. Thank you. Any other oh. counselors I have any questions? Have question. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have a question. Was... Oh, I'm sorry. Councillor Juvenville. Well, thank you, Councillor Devaney. Uh, so how long were you in the Attorney General's office, and who was the AG? The AG was uh, Frank Bellotti. I was there for five years, and he made me a special, and uh, Frank Bellotti gave me my first job uh, in the business of law, and I'm, I owe Frank everything I've got. You do? I do. Well, I'll be seeing him shortly. I'll make sure I get the list from him as to what he wants. Okay, you can, you can do okay. that, but I, I can assure you he has significantly more resources than I do. <laughs> So you were there for five years? Five years in, in his trial division. And that was for eminent domain cases? Yes, it was primarily, yes. 95% of what I did there was eminent domain. Are you a regular at the land court? I am not a regular at the land court. I'm a regular in the superior court. How come you don't go to the land court? Uh, why don't I go to land court? I, tip, <laughs> I will tell you, under Chapter 79, the, the law that drives eminent domain law, exclusive jurisdiction on all eminent domain cases is in the superior court. You can't take an eminent domain case to the okay. land court. You can't go to the land court with that? Not with an eminent domain, not on the issue of damages. You could, it could be a bifurcation of an issue that might result in uh, the land court looking at the bundle of rights or something to do with the title of the property or something like that. That I have done, and I have actually done that recently. So you've been to the land court? I've been to the land court. I have been in the land court, yes. Okay. And what's that kind of uh, legal issues does the land court resolve? The, the land court has a broad spectrum of issues that they would typically handle. One of the things that uh, I am so impressed by is that conveyancing, uh, you know, I'm convinced you're born a conveyancer. You can't be made one. Uh, and that's one of the strengths of uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, Why they, so? Why do you say that? What's that? Why do you say that? That you're born a conveyancer. Because I don't think it's something that can be taught readily to a lot of attorneys. A lot of attorneys that I work with, typically, uh, counselor, in an eminent domain case, if I run into a problem, I'm very good at what the damages and the trial and handling all the experts. I know enough about the title issues, but when they get dicey or tricky, uh, we, we turn to people that are more familiar with those issues. Uh, and obviously Mr. Smith would be one of them. And we've, that's what we've done. Uh, so I don't know. Have, hey, I, have you seen the nominee in the land court practicing law? I seen the, the the nominee. Have I seen him in the land court nominee practicing law? I have not. I've not seen him in there. Uh, the land court has jury trials, right? They do on in some cases. Yes. Okay. Uh, so after your five years with the AG's office, what what happened? I left the attorney general's office and Frank Bellotti. Uh, allowed me to be a special assistant attorney general and assigned me to pretty much specifically only eminent domain cases. And then after Frank left office, I became a special under Shannon doing eminent domain cases. As a matter of fact, I've, I was assigned as a special assistant attorney general for eminent domain matters for every attorney general up to and through Martha Coakley and Mara Healy is the only one I haven't done special work for. I don't believe she has enough of that activity that would support the use of a, a special on a regular basis. So that what, they don't do the imminent, imminent domain up there anymore? They do, but they have full-time assistant attorney generals. It is vastly different, the practice of eminent domain law. There's less takings now than there have been in the past. When I was practicing it in there in the late 70s, uh, we needed an entire division of trial attorneys to keep the pace with the takings. 
we were constantly, I was constantly going to jurisdiction after jurisdiction, trying cases. And who was taking, who was doing all this taking, like the MBTA and the Turnpike and stuff like that? The, 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 the largest taker of property in the Commonwealth is the Department of Transportation. And then that was usually followed by the MBTA and then the old MDC. Uh, then your cities and towns would uh, fall in behind that. But I would say the biggest taker historically, but it's not even close, is the Department of Transportation. DEM, DEP, other agencies do have uh, limited taking authority, but you, you would see them occasionally. Uh, Spectacle Island being one of them where I represented the Commonwealth in that particular case, but that was the Department of Environmental Management. How long have you been practicing? Uh, 42 years. How long are you going to go? Uh, I'm going to shop till I drop, I think. Uh, that's Everyone says that to me all the time. Uh, as long as my health holds out, I'm, I think I'm going to continue on. My, my office is small council. It's only there's only three of us there, three lawyers. And where's your office? It's in Saugus on Essex Street. Well, I admire that. Keep going till you go. Till that's it. Uh, my wife has things to say about that and others, but I I tend to I, you know when I go away I want to come back after five or six days. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving tomorrow morning for five days. Well, you did a great job for this Thank nominee, you. but I'm going to have to ask you to please read that rule of brevity again the next time you come in. I will do that. I'm only kidding you. Oh, I, and I understand that. Thank you, Councilor Jubinville, and thank you, all councilors. Um, well, I, I just wanted to say that uh, Council Ferrara just joined us. Do you have any questions for the nominee? Uh, I don't have a question, sorry, but, I, but I, I, am, I am familiar with your office. I've been at Lynch and Lynch for 28 years. And uh, you guys do a nice job. And I see uh, some of you reported uh, settlements and verdicts in Lawyers Weekly. So uh, congratulations and thank you for coming today. Thank you very much. Um, Councilor um, Ionella, um, we've just concluded uh, questions from the, you've just joined us. So do you have any questions for this witness for Peter Flynn? Uh, no, I was out in the back here talking to a few constituents, but uh, I do not have any questions. Good to see you though. Okay, thank you. Um, it, you you agree. I, I appreciate your testimony. Uh, I especially like to hear from opposing lawyers. I want to know what your impression is of this person that you went into court. What was your your opinion of um, attorney um, of attorney Smith when after you left in the that really important case that you had in court with him? Uh, that. He did it uh, with integrity. There was nothing, he didn't do anything that was off. He dealt with the facts of the case. Uh, and I was in very impressed with that. Plus his knowledge of the, the real estate components in the case. But uh, I mean, if, if someone said to me, what, you know, when you try a case, uh, to be blunt, he, when he walks in a courtroom, He's he's going to win 50% of the time because of his demeanor, comportment, and how he conducts himself. He, you know, when it gets rough, he 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 doesn't get personal with things, and he's practiced law and he knows he knows how it works and how it should not work. So you know, when you throw that in, where you know, when I'm watching him try a case, the jury's you know is watching him very very carefully, and I've been. Very impressed by that. Well, your testimony means a lot to the counselors, believe me. And, um, you know, in, in my tenure, we've had people sitting in your chair that really didn't know the nominee. You know, they knew them in passing as uh, attorneys. And, and, and your testimony is what I look for. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Thank you, counsel. Our next um, uh, witness is Stephen Pescucci. And um, Peter? And I know I pronounced your name right because my mother was a Danucci. Yeah. <laughs> and those two C's are Cha. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Good morning to the Governor's Council. Uh, it's an honor um, 
to be before you this morning to talk about Kevin Smith. I'm not a lawyer and I won't pretend to uh, play one today. That's that's not my area of expertise. Um, I've known Kevin since uh, 2010, uh, mainly uh, through youth sports coaching. Uh, Kevin and I coached uh, youth football in Concord and Carlisle uh, for six years. Uh, we also coached basketball together for at least two years. Uh, and since our children have uh, retired from playing youth sports and Kevin and I have retired from youth coaching, we've remained real good friends and I'm just happy to say, and we're also neighbors. Uh, so I see Kevin a lot. Um, this morning, I'd like to talk about uh, Kevin's work ethic, um, Kevin's demeanor, and um, Kevin's character. On the work ethic end, um, Kevin, you know, as you know, his background left a, a big job um, at a big law firm in Boston um, to start up his own law firm uh, in Concord. So he was doing that, uh, and he was also coaching youth sports literally every night for two to three hours. But I will tell you from a practitioner, that job really never ends. It goes way beyond the practices and the games. Uh, it got to the point where I sat down with Kevin in his office one day. I wonder if he remembers this. And uh, Kevin would coach football in the fall, basketball in the winter, baseball in the spring. And I said to him, Kevin, you got to stop it. You got to like let somebody else do the coaching. And uh, of course, that plea didn't work. Um, Kevin's one of the hardest workers that I've ever met. Uh, a, a typical day for him is an early morning run, regardless of the weather. Uh, the winter and the summer are the same. His law office going right from his law office to a sports field and then being with his family at night. And I really, really respect that work ethic. I think that work ethic translates very well uh, to being a judge. The second thing is Kevin's temperament. I will tell you from being involved in youth sports my whole life, both playing and coaching, it can get a little dicey on the sidelines. Uh, for the most part, it's the greatest thing for all of us involved, but there is a side of it um, that is really isn't pretty at all. It's um, it's parents. It's sometimes the the uh, opposing coaches. It's sometimes the kids. Uh, sometimes you'll occasionally have a referee that you don't agree with. Um, I wish standing next to Kevin for all those years that I had his demeanor. I wish I had his temperament. Where in a situation where things flared up, Kevin always stepped back, kept his calm assessed the situation and made really smart decisions. Decisions always based on the participants, which are, which are kids. The last thing I'll talk about is Kevin's uh, character and mainly revolves around family. Um, we kind of grew up in similar paths where family was everything. We both come from big families. Um, I'm, I'm one of five from roots in uh, East Boston, actually. And, um, it's the most important thing for us. You know, a lot of us get involved in coaching so we can be with our, our kids. It's, a, it's really important to us to set an example the right way. And as much as I thought I did that, I would always look to Kevin who would pull up to practice in his, his SUV and the doors would open. His kids, multiple kids, would pop, would pop out of the SUV. Bags of balls and, and whatever would also pop out of the SUV. Uh, and it was just really impressive uh, to witness that. I, I've coached his kids too, and I will tell you right now, um, I always observe young men and women, and Kevin's uh, sons and, and daughter always, always walk right up to you without any hesitation. Hi, Mr. Pascucci, how are you? A lot of kids sometimes put their eyes down and avoid you, and that's not Kevin Smith's kids, and I respect that so much. And again, Kevin's the guy that gave up the big law practice in Boston to come back to Concord, do his own, um, his own law firm. And I think a lot of the reason for that was to spend time with his family uh, and not a lot of people that I know would do that. Um, so I'm really happy to be here and honored that Kevin asked me uh, to talk about him. I think he'd be an outstanding, outstanding judge. Um, and um, just thank you very much. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you for your great testimony. Uh, any councils have questions for Mr. Pascuzzi? Thank you. I, I just want to say that um, your testimony means a lot because it's personal. You see him, you see him when he's under stress, 
when he has to um, listen to an umpire's decision that's not popular with him and uh, the kids, the parents, it's a lot. And I think the commitment that you have said that he's had, I mean, it's year round, all the sports, um, and to take time from his practice to do that, that says a lot about it. And um, if you hadn't come, we would not know about his, um, you know, that activity that he has committed so much time for. So thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your testimony. Our next <laughs> nominee is Francis Keneally. And uh, Francis Keneally is on Zoom somewhere. We'll find you. Can Can you hear me, Mr. Keneally? <laughs> I, I can, Councilor Devaney. Thank you. Okay, you thank you. Okay, you're on. <laughs> thank you, thank you Councilor Devaney. Uh, I would be remiss if at first I didn't uh, thank the governor, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, the Governor's Legal Council, the JNC, and the Executive Council. As you all know, last September, we at the SJC suffered a devastating loss with the uh, sudden passing of Chief Justice Ralph Vance and your concerted collective, collective efforts in bringing us back to full strength and putting us on a path to heal mean a great deal to us. So thank you to all. I've known the nominee Kevin Smith for over 30 years. We're not best friends. We've never shared a cup of coffee together. I don't have his cell phone number. I don't know the names of his children. But I have had the opportunity over three decades to assess his character, to speak with him many, many times, and to spend time with him both in personal and professional conversations. In 1988, Kevin and I appeared in the U.S. District Court in Washington, D.C. on opposite sides of a civil trial. We appeared there not as lawyers, but as classmates, law school classmates vying for a spot on the national trial team. After graduation of all places, by chance, of all the places we could have practiced, Kevin and I wound up in Baltimore, Maryland, practicing at similar law firms, practicing similar practice areas. And I would see Kevin from time to time in crowded courthouse corridors, running to pick a jury, or we would be going off to a settlement conference or talking about the latest deposition and trial prep, fully engaged in a busy practice of law. And as we all know, legal secretaries see lawyers at their best and their worst, and by chance, of all the places that my wife, Kathy, the legal secretary, could wind up working in Baltimore was at Kevin's firm. And it, the firm was known as a hard charging litigation firm. But Kathy, my wife, would come home and remark that Kevin Smith was kind, respectful to all the secretaries, the paralegals, the receptionists. And it meant, meant a great deal to her because not everyone had that same demeanor. As you know, Kevin and I grew up, Kevin grew up in the Boston area, he went to DC. I grew up in Dorchester. And as much as we enjoyed Baltimore, Boston and the Commonwealth always beckoned us. So by chance, in 1997, we bumped into one another in Fannell Hall. I had returned, he had returned, we just didn't know it. And since that time, we've kept in close touch as friends and commiserated over <laughs> running, a, running a solo practice and all the challenges that come with that. Mm. The, last time Kevin, the last time Kevin and I were in court together was in 2014, not as adversaries this time, but I had the privilege of watching Kevin argue uh, before the SJC in a case called Brian Hickey versus Pathways Association, a case that involved well over 70 lot owners, highly complex. And I watched as Kevin, I watched with pride as my friend Kevin Smith had a mastery of the record, the facts, and the law. So as I look back at that trial in 1998 with Kevin, I don't recall who the better lawyer was that day, but I do know who the better lawyer is today, and it's Kevin Smith. And I'm confident that he will be an exceptional land court judge, that he will be treasured by his fellow judges on the land court for, for his diligence uh, and for his selfless um, uh, commitment to the work of the land court. He will be respected by the lawyers who appear before him for being supremely prepared every time he takes the bench. Self-represented litigants will, will appreciate him for his kindness and humility. And of course, people near and dear to me, courthouse staff, will, will appreciate the way in which he treats them, as he did with my wife back in 
1995 and 1994. So I cannot commend enough the nominee, Kevin Smith, to you. I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak before you this morning. Thank you. No, no thank you. Your testimony is very valuable. I'm going to call on my counselors to have, have any questions. First hand I see is Councilor Juvenville. Got the name right. <laughs> I can't mispronounce that. Uh, I don't have any questions. I just want to uh, thank you for giving that testimony. It means a lot to me. And I want to thank you for what you do up at the Supreme Court. You're probably one of the worst, hardest working state employees I've ever seen. And you do a wonderful thank job up there. Thank you. Keep it up. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think I saw it. Council oh, uh, actually, you know, uh, Council Juvenile took the words out of my mouth. Um, you're very humble. You didn't even start off by saying that you're the clerk of the Supreme Judicial Court. And uh, I appreciate that. But I also appreciate the hard work you do every day. Um, I often get emails from you on Sundays. I know you're in the office probably after church, uh, sending out emails about the cases coming up. So I appreciate uh, all your service to the Commonwealth. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Ionella. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> No question, just a comment. Fran, you know, from people that I speak with about how the SJC works, you have been extremely helpful. Uh, as Councillor uh, Ferreira says, you're humble, you're hardworking, uh, you're so accommodating. And I can only say the best about you, and I just hope you can continue that excellent job that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank I, you. First of all, I want to thank you for pronouncing my name right maybe it's because you're irish <laughs> it's Davini. <laughs> thank you <laughs> um i have heard so much about you and i i echo all the comments that the counselors have said here and and thank you for your work and i want to thank you especially for mentioning justice gads and uh i have known him i knew him for decades i voted for him three times in, on his journey to the SJC, and uh, he will always be missed. So, so thank you for that. Now, thank you, um, thank you. so, um, what would you say is the greatest attribute that that this nominee will bring to the bench? I think that uh, if I can get away with giving you two, it, it will be um, he, he is. You will be supremely prepared. He will dig into every situation, every case, and know it better or as perhaps as well as the litigants, but also it's his temperament. He's ex he's a very humble person, someone who will uh, treat people with dignity and respect no matter who they are. Um, and that humility is, is something that's quite remarkable. You know what impressed me um, that, you know, I don't hear all the time how he takes an interest and cares about the people that he works with, no matter what position they are. That's very important to me. So um, we we all respect you and respect your testimony. And um, I thank you for taking the time today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I have you make your presentation, um, I think it's uh, appropriate for me to read a couple of letters. And I have to say, I have a letter from someone. There's no words how much I respect this man and what a wonderful job he's doing as the chair of the land court. Gordon Piper, I voted for him 20 years ago. And I have to, I have to tell the counselors because only Councilor Ionella had the honor with me to vote for Judge Piper. But I just want to tell the public that in my tenure, I never saw anyone more enthusiastic about getting an appointment to the land court he was so animated, and I'll never forget it. He said, this is all I've ever wanted in my life, just like this. And I thought, oh, my God. I mean, we don't see that. And he was so sincere, and he proved what a wonderful judge he is and to be the chair of the land court. 
And I just want to say that I can vote no when I know it's not when it is appropriate. I have never voted no on any land court nominee. You know why? Because they're all so outstanding. So um, you'd be a great addition to these people, and um, what a mentor in in Judge Piper. So I'll read his letter. Dear Councillor Devaney, I hope this finds you well. I write to you and through you to the rest of the council in advance of the council's interview with attorney Kevin Smith, who has been nominated to serve as an associate justice of the land court. I understand that you have had the opportunity to meet with attorney Smith for over four hours <laughs> to learn of his qualifications to fill this vacancy on our court and that you will be presiding over tomorrow's hearing. The council should know that while I will not be in attendance tomorrow in person, this nomination to fill our vacancy is of the highest importance to the land court. As you can imagine, with only seven statutory judicial positions, the absence of a single judge is felt acutely in the land court, court even during usual times. In the midst of the pandemic, as the court has pivoted to handle a large and expanding docket virtually, and with limited access to our courthouse, the need for a full bench is even more pressing. As conditions improve and we emerge from these restrictions, we will need all possible help in making progress with our cases. I will be following the streaming video of the council's proceedings. And in that manner, will keep myself fully informed about all that takes place. I have the highest regard for Kevin Smith and his skill and experience practicing in our court. He has appeared before me several times over the years in different cases and always has impressed me with his legal knowledge, his courtroom ease and demeanor, and his affable and pleasant way with all involved. I have seen him in a contentious case where one of his adversaries was a self-represented party, and he was patient and courteous in that manner, in that manner, as at all of the times I have encountered him. Attorney Smith has had many years of experience in civil litigation. Importantly, much of his professional work has been in real estate-related cases, which affords him a particularly close fit to our work and will let him handle comfortably and specialize, the specialized nature of the land court's judicial business. He is highly regarded in the bar, as well as by the judges of our court, having appeared before several of them. If the council should provide its confirmation of its nomination, I am convinced Kevin Smith will be great and valuable addition to the land court's bench. I thank the governor and lieutenant governor for this excellent nomination and the council for its careful consideration. Please do not hesitate to contact me if I may offer anything further to assist you and the rest of the council. Please stay well, please stay well. very truly yours, Gordon H. Piper, Chief Justice. Is there any, I know that he was unable to come and he really wanted to, he's busy in court. Is there any way that we can see him that he's watching or is he in court right now? My understanding is he's in court. Yeah, yeah, he was, he, he, he was very sorry that he couldn't make it. And I got, and we received, well, I received a letter from Greg Peterson. And uh, he reports, dear counselor, I write to support the confirmation of Kevin T. Smith as Associate Justice of the Massachusetts Land Court. I have known Attorney Smith for 15 years. He has never been anything but a highly competent attorney and a kind and honorable human being. We served together for five years on the board of the Carlisle Conservation Foundation, where he provided wise and moderate counsel 
to the organization during some of its busiest years of preserving land and enduring public access to our open space. And I want just I just want to tell you that I was involved in some of these with constituents from Carlisle. And um, I want to thank you because it would have been devastating if the opponents had been successful in what they want to do, um, ruining that that beautiful land. I, I won't get into that. I'll talk to you later. As a young attorney, he learned the law at large in well-respected firms in Boston. Since 2010, he has been a sole practitioner of law from his office in Concord. He is accustomed to having to do most of his research and writing, which in my view is excellent tra training for judicial work. He has deep experience in land litigation, which makes him a perfect candidate for the land court. In addition to his nonprofit work in, in private law practice, he has a serious track record of volunteer public service, including five years on the Zoning Board of Appeals, three as chair, which is relevant to zoning and land use cases that come before the land court, and six years on the town's Recreation Commission organizing youth sports. Attorney Smith has exactly the kind of worth ethic and kind but firm temperament I believe we need in our judges. I have watched him chair ZBA hearings where the patience of board members was sorely tested. With Yuma, he reigned in aggressive behavior by some making appearances before the board. With short, friendly, and to-the-point questions, he teased out the critical facts for the board to consider. He is a highly respected member of this community. I urge you and the Governor's Council as a whole to confirm Kevin T. Smith to be an Associate Justice of the Massachusetts Land Court when you take up his nomination on March 31, 2021. Sincerely, Greg D. Peterson. So, um, you know, I, I there, I, I think that um, well said, and obviously it was heartfelt. And I know the councils appreciate those letters that they will that th this is all in public, on our record in our council office. So, having done that now, councilors, let's hear from you for your presentation. Counselors, there's one additional witness on the screen. I'm sorry, I can't hear. What is it, Mr. Mr. Freeman? I think I think you may have skipped over him on the list. Did we skip Mr. Freeman? Oh my gosh! Oh, I apologize. I am so so sorry. Um, I had them in a different order from the people who were present, and you've been very patient, waiting there, listening to me. I apologize. Okay, we do have a witness, and we welcome you. Peter L. Freeman from the Freeman Law Group in Yarmouthport, Massachusetts. Thank you so much for joining us on Zoom. Thank you very much. I want to make sure you can hear me first that I'm unmuted. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. And I don't mind waiting patiently. In fact, all of the words I got to hear, including the letters, they're so true. You know, the word superlative is sometimes overused. And so I'll start with my conclusion. He really is a superlative lawyer. I know he will be a superlative judge. So I have actually known Kevin for a very long time. I've known him for about 18 years. In fact, when we worked on a lane court case together. And he has been of counsel to my firm since about 2012, a uh, little after he went out on his own. So we have tried many, many cases together, including one, by the way, that was the land court case that uh, clerk Keneally referred to when it was argued at the Supreme Judicial Court a right-of-way case that started with me, but I was very fortunate to have Kevin uh, to handle the litigation part of that case. And obviously he did a good job because we won at the SJC. So in any case, in any case, he's always been first seed at the trials and I've worked with him on trial preparation. I've seen him work with clients and with witnesses and I have seen him in the courtroom. As others have said, he is clearly an accomplished litigator and lawyer. He has both great knowledge and great skill his demeanor in the courtroom is indeed always calm and professional. I'm not sure I would stand up if I was first seat. You know, that's why I let him be first seat. And he is the best, really just about the best trial lawyer I've ever seen. <clears throat> he, 
He treats witnesses and opposing counsel with respect, and of course, likewise with the court. <clears throat> and picking up on what someone else said about pro se litigants, we recently had a trial where the appellants were pro se, uh, and he went out of his way, Kevin went out of his way to, uh, to be courteous, to extend courtesies to them, uh, and to help them make the conduct of the trial as smooth as possible despite their lack of knowledge of evidentiary rules and the like. I have interacted and worked with Kevin practically every day for all of these many years. And in addition to being a superb litigator, he also possesses other characteristics. They've been mentioned by others, <laughs> other characteristics that make a great lawyer and I believe will also make a great judge. These characteristics are an ability to listen, an ability to dissect complex issues, a strong work ethic, I've seen that for sure with all the work we've done together, and integrity of the highest order. Although I'm older than Kevin, which you might be able to tell, uh, he has in fact been my mentor when it comes to litigation. We've worked on many types of cases, including contract matters, title matters, land use matters, a lot of permitting cases, uh, many of which have been Chapter 40B, affordable housing cases, which is my specialty. Uh, we presented the developers. There is no doubt about Kevin's top level technical skills and intellectual ability. In, ad in addition, I believe that Kevin's interpersonal skills that I have seen so frequently when I work with him and when he's worked with our clients uh, and with other attorneys are also attributes that will serve him very well as a judge. I know that Kevin possesses not only great knowledge of the law, but also great respect for the law and for the rule of law. And I know that this is what motivates him to want to be a judge. <clears throat> In closing, I can honestly tell you that Kevin is one of the finest lawyers and people that I've ever met. And I'm very privileged, privileged to have worked with him. I will miss him as you might gather, but I am very happy for him and so proud to have known him. And in my opinion, he is so extremely qualified to become a judge. I will miss working with him as a colleague, but I know that he will be a fair, honest, and hardworking judge. And as I said at the beginning, a super and, super and superlative judge. So I thank you for this uh, privilege and opportunity, and I certainly help you confirm him. And just one other thing, uh, which is simply that uh, as a, an avid sports fan, the commentary previously about Kevin's demeanor on the sideline. I know what that, that's like, and I don't know which is hotter as a sports fan, uh, sometimes abiding by a, an umpire's ruling or sometimes a judge's ruling, but Kevin will handle well, it well. So I, I thank you for this opportunity and I certainly urge you to confirm him. Thanks. That was a great analogy. Uh, thank you so much for your sincere uh, testimony and it means a lot that he was uh, your mentor as well. Uh, any councils have any questions? Well, I just want to tell you the wait was worth it to hear your testimony. So I thank you very much for thank you. attending. Right, now that we've completed the list of witnesses, now it, it, it's your turn to, um, you know what I should say, we, uh, you know, uh, Councilor Duff is the only one on Zoom and I, I hope that you hear me uh, to be able to question. I know uh, Councillor Hurley is also remote. Okay. And we can. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. If you have in. any questions. No, we will. No. We will speak up if we do. But thank you for asking, okay. Council. I appreciate okay, it. Okay. Because I don't see you, so that's no, why. All right. Thank you very much. My okay. Favorite. So now it's uh, your um, your turn for your presentation. Great. Uh, thank you, Councillor Devaney. Um, thank you, Council, for considering uh, my nomination. Uh, to be the next associate justice of the land court. <clears throat> uh, of course, I'd like to thank uh, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito for, nomina for nominating me. Um, I'd like to thank Bob Ross and Lauren Green Petrino for the work that they've done through the nominating process. And, and so I just want to make sure I mentioned their names. And I'd obviously like to thank the witnesses who came today uh, and have spoken here. Uh, on my behalf, and and also I'd like to thank. Uh, there's many other lawyers and non-lawyers who have who have tried to support me through this process, and and I've thanked them uh, 
personally, but I'm not going to identify them now, but there's a lot of people who have been helpful to me throughout this process. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank my wife, uh, Jen, who's sitting here today. Um, and my kid, my kids, Liam, Declan, Maggie, and Griffin, uh, for their support throughout this process. I lean on them a lot and they are, they're always there uh, for me. Uh, you have my ap application. Uh, it's filled with descriptions of my experience and my cases I've handled. Um, so rather than rehash that, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself and, and how I got here. Um, I'm the oldest of six kids that were born in, in seven years, three boys and three girls. Um, my parents came from working class families in uh, East Bridgewater. They met in first grade and became friends and were married 20 years later. Um, my dad was a self-made guy. He was the first in his family to go to college and he went all the way. He eventually he wanted to be an engineer and he got his PhD. Um, I remember the, when he got it because I was four years old and I actually remember the graduation party. So we were young, my parents were young and, and we were young, but but I remember those days. My mother was also the first person from her family to graduate from college and she became a nurse. Um, I lost my dad nine years ago. Uh, my mother hopefully is able to see this. So um, briefly about my family, we grew up in Acton for the most part. I actually lived in Watertown for the first few years of my life. So my dad went to get his PhD. We moved back and I grew up in Acton. Typical family, you know, dinner together every night, you know, mass on Sundays. Um, our parents encouraged us to get involved with sports and music and church. Um, and all of us, to some extent, got involved in those things. But our parents taught us about being respectful of people, always have an open mind um, and work hard. And those are really the, the driving principles that uh, our parents uh, tried to teach us. Um, I was the first and only person in my family to go to law school. Uh, I don't have any people that um, I can point to to say I emulated them. Uh, I was trying to emulate them when I went to law school. I just I think I was drawn to um, the adversarial process of helping people uh, reach resolution to their disagreements. I think that's why I initially went to law school, um, and from there, I just tried to take what my parents taught me and tried to use those to make myself as, as good a lawyer as I could be, uh, and that was work hard, be fair, and be honest. Um, and I believe those principles have served me well, and I, those are the kind of principles I try to bring with me to the bench. Um, just one it's been mentioned by the witnesses, but I just wanted to speak to it directly. Um, I did leave the city of Boston 11 years ago to open my own practice. Uh, my kids were young um, and they needed me around to help them with things like homework and reading and sports. We've heard about my involvement in sports, but it just wasn't around enough working in the city. I needed to be more present. So I did made the decision to leave. Um, it was a big decision, but it was a, it was the right decision. Uh, I didn't make as much money on my own as I would in the city. Um, but I had, I, made, I had enough work to pay the bills. Um, I had decent cases I could try. I had a lot of lawyers in the city that referred cases to me that kept me involved in interesting types of work. And I still was able to spend as much time as I wanted or needed with my kids. So now I'm here. I've been practicing for 32 years. I've tried cases in the land court, <clears throat> superior court, the district court, um, federal court. I've argued at the appeals court, the SJC, and the First Circuit. Um, some jury trials, some bench trials. Um, my experiences in the courtroom, I think, and in my personal life have prepared me to come before you and ask for your uh, confirmation of this nomination. So as I sit before the council, uh, humbled as I am uh, with this nomination, um, I will pledge to the council that if I'm if I'm confirmed, I will bring to the bench the hard work that I believe is important in everything, uh, honesty uh, with myself and with others, and and I will 
a pledge to be fair to everybody, my fellow judges, the staff, uh, and most importantly, as a judge, the litigants, the witnesses, and the lawyers. So I thank you for um, listening to my opening comments, and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone in the council has. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll start with, um, let me go to one, uh, District 1. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I actually uh, don't have any questions. Let me tell you why. Um, I had a very lengthy conversation with Jennifer Roberts, Judge Jennifer Roberts. And when she came before us first time, um, I asked uh, I asked the uh, the chief of the housing of the uh, land court whether or not she was qualified. And she said she's one of the top five people in the Commonwealth that was qualified. And Jennifer finally got through um, this council and she's a great judge from, from all accounts. And I've never been to the land court, but I solely rely on what Jennifer Roberts tells me. And she tells me you're top shelf. You're an awesome person and a terrific lawyer. I've looked through your credentials, your resume. Um, I think you're gonna do a terrific job on the land court and you certainly have my vote next week, sir. Thank you very much, Councilor. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Jubinville. Thank you. Uh, I likewise don't have any questions. Uh, iterate what Councilor Ferrara said. Uh, Frank Keneally and I spent a lot of time talking and I value his judgment a great deal. I don't have any questions. I think you're gonna make a good judge in the land court. Thank you very much, Councilor. Thank you very much, uh, Councilor. I also don't have any questions. You're such a uh, outstanding nominee. Uh, I was very impressed with your presentation, uh, as well as the folks who spoke on your behalf. Yeah, you're cl clearly a person of uh, compassion. I obviously have the uh, experience. You're a family guy. Uh, I think you're going to be great. Now, I just, maybe one question: How long have you lived in Concord, or did you live in Concord? Well, I actually, I actually live in Carlisle, okay. but I but Concord is uh, right next door and it's part of the same community. Okay. The only reason I've been there for my, twenty years. My sister has lived in Concord for like 30, 40 years. Yeah. Okay, but. Uh, Best of luck. I'll be more than happy to support you next week. Thank you very much. Thank Councilor. you, Councilor. Councilor Kennedy. Thank you. I'd like to ask you a lot of questions, but I'll, I'll be honest. <coughs> like most lawyers, we don't know a lot about the land court. You know, uh, I spent a lot of time doing criminal work, a lot of time doing civil work. I've only done one land court case in 37 years uh, that I alluded to earlier. So, so we, when we're in a situation like that, we have to rely on other people. And I, uh, in terms of their opinion of, about your abilities and your witnesses were great. I, I, I am particularly um, fond of and uh, rely upon Peter Flynn, your witness who uh, goes back with my family 70 years at least. Uh, and uh, he, I, I value his judgment very much. And he called me right away when you were nominated and talked to me about it. Uh, so, uh, in, when I have a land court case or I have an adverse possession case or an eminent domain case, I send them right to him because uh, he's probably the best around at it, as everybody knows. So, so relying on him, I'll be voting for you next week and some of your other witnesses. Uh, and I thank you for uh, putting your name in. I think you're going to be a great judge. Thank you. Thank Councilor you, Councilor. Councilor DePaula. Thank you, Councilor. Um, I suppose I'll keep the trend because. Um, my experience and, and the issues I'm passionate about don't necessarily intersect with land court. So I look to experience and temperament. Uh, and, and what I see uh, from the testimony today alone, let alone the folks I've spoken to uh, leading into here, uh, speaks tremendously to your character. Like you, uh, I was at a 21 hour uh, billing firm and I left uh, when my first daughter was on the way because I knew that that was going to be the most important way to spend those years of my life. Uh, and I sp think it speaks to your, your character and your motivations. Um, and also, you know, hearing today uh, that you were uh, known to be treating the staff in your first large law firm with respect. And, and again, having been in a, in a firm like that, um, while I worked with many great lawyers, there were definitely folks who, who were not kind to the staff um, and were demeaning and condescending. So I really appreciate that as well. Uh, and then finally, your your service to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I sit on the planning board in Worcester, and I know how uh, 
folks can come into hearings with a lot of passion. It's impacting their home. It's impacting their vision of their neighborhood. And so um, hearing that you were able to, you know, handle those hearings and, and be respectful of the folks uh, giving public testimony spoke a lot to me as well. So um, I look forward to supporting your, your nomination next week. Great. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor. Now I'm going to our Zoom counselors. Uh, Councillor Duff. Thank you. you Thank you, Councillor <laughs> Devaney. Um, I wish we could see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Attorney Smith, um, I, I guess what you're hearing is exactly some of the stuff we talked about is land court is so very specialized that not a lot of people know about it. Sometimes they confuse it with housing and they're completely two completely different issues. Um, but um, I guess my first question I want to ask you, and if, uh, pardon me if it's just glaringly obvious, but why on earth do you want this job? Because it's very difficult, uh, convoluted law. Uh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I, it's not a trick question, but it's, it's, um, sincerely, no. I'm curious. Well, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. 20 years ago, I set out to uh, create a practice that would allow me to go to the land court, but um, my practice took me to the land court a few times. I had some success there. Uh, I liked the way the cases were handled there in terms of being assigned to judges and being carried through the end of the case. You got to know the judge a little bit uh, more that way as compared to the superior court. And I began to do more and more work that centered around real estate issues. Um, involving ownership issues, owning, involving development issues. And um, I just developed a, a knowledge of the land use issues that are often tried in the land court. And so I, I've always wanted to be a judge. And as I did more of this land use work, it, being a judge in the land court seemed like a, a good fit for me. So that's really the, the reason why I put my, put my name in. Good, good for you. Good for you. We need people like you frankly that will step up to it and i'm as i told you i'm very familiar with uh catholic university law school it's a fine law school most of the lawyers i know that went there actually uh do telecom stuff so um but in any event just being there um i'm sure it was a fabulous experience um what what is the is there i i guess a more or less typical case that comes uh to land court, do you expect, or are they just also very different? I think they're all very different. I, I think you'll see a lot of adverse possession cases. You'll have cases involving uh, real estate development approval issues. You'll have those are zoning type appeals. You have uh, disputes over uh, property rights, boundaries, easements. Um, it covers uh, quite a di quite a number of uh, different areas, breach of contracts. So I can't say in my experience that there's a typical case. I think it covers the spectrum, uh, all of course related to people's ownership interest in real estate, but it covers every possible um, disagreement that might arise <laughs> with uh, real property. What have been some of the more interesting cases uh, that you've been on either side of in land court? Uh, well, I had an interesting case involving uh, a dispute over uh, a dispute over the sale of a, of a commercial building where two different buyers wanted to run um, a medical marijuana uh, business out of this building. I represented the seller. Um, the reason it was interesting was number one, the two buyers, each of whom claimed they had a right to buy the property were very aggressive uh, because this was a perfect situation for medical marijuana and this was in the early days of the approvals of medical marijuana um, uh, businesses. Um, I had the case was handled by Judge Foster in the land court and because time was critical, um, he agreed to a very shortened discovery period and a quick trial so that my client, the seller, who just wanted to sell his property, he didn't necessarily care to whom um, could hopefully end up making the sale and it just it, it it was a good lawyer on the other side and i think it was breach of contract issues it was credibility of witnesses uh issues and uh it was it was interesting from that standpoint okay um i see on your resume you've done some 40b work do you want to share a little bit about that with us uh sure sure um as mr freeman testified uh just before 
I, I began. Um, he is a specialist in, in 40B uh, permitting. Um, a lot of people, neighbors, abutters to projects, uh, object to the approval of uh, affordable housing projects. Uh, the bulk of my work has been uh, supporting the developer to uh, prove to a court, land court or superior court, that uh, the project um, should be approved um, as, a, as an affordable housing project. Those are heavy expert uh, laden cases, uh, less fact cases. Um, I've also tried those cases in the Housing Appeals Committee. There are different procedural reasons why you'd be in different courts, but it's uh, most often um, supporting the developer and proving that the approvals are appropriate given the project that, that's been proposed. Yeah, that, that you're right. That's one of those cases that could really uh, go into some different places. Let me ask you this. Um, do you think that developers uh, for their 40B requirements should be allowed to not actually do the building and instead just, uh, you know, throw money in the pot to the city? Or do you think they should be actually required to do the work that they sh that the community is frankly expecting them to do? Uh, I haven't actually run across that situation, uh, Councillor. Um, my experience has been that if the developer is able to finance the project, that the developer builds the project. Uh, I haven't run into the situation with my clients that you described, so I'm not sure I could answer that. Well, often they do uh, they do build the project, but what they do is in lieu of building the units, they give the city money. And that money then goes into a general fund to be used however the city wants um, and does not necessarily go towards um, housing. And it's a very common practice. Uh, it happens every single day. And it is one of the reasons that this is a continuing issue is because it never gets resolved because there is a loophole, um, which of course it benefits the cities. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing sort of gerbil wheel. Um, so, uh, and I don't know that you would have experienced it, but I would, I would expect you to be familiar with it. Um, all right, I'm, I'm all set. Thank you. No further questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Hurley. Yes, can thank you. Hear you. Me? Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, you're on. All right. Um, why did you name all your children Irish names? Uh, most of my relatives are of Irish descent. It's interesting because I've only known one person with the name Declan. Um, but that I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. I really do. We talked at some length. Um, I think Councillor Duff has ably uh, covered the questions uh, and areas that I would have had. Uh, and um, in talking to you, I get the sense that you are the real deal uh, and that you're going to make a great judge. So you have my support for next week. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Hurley. Um, Again, I want to thank you for all your time. I, I think we, I think we beat the record. I think it was four and a half hours, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, it was wonderful to meet with you. And you know, as I've always said, I, I meet with everyone because I'm just not voting for the person on the paper. I want to know the real person, and um, I like your experience that you're bringing. You have worked in every court. You know, SJC, uh, Supreme District, all of it, you're know, bringing that experience to the land court. Um, as I always do, I like to go through your journey getting here. Now, I always like to allow the people who don't know what the procedure is, and it is the um, Judicial Nominating Commission, which are 21 lawyers who have the real authority of who is going to be presented because um, they have the ability to choose who they're going to interview, who they're going to recommend to the governor. And the governor's council 
has no part of that procedure. We don't know how many people are being um, how applied, how many rejected, how many interviewed. We only have one person to vote on us on, on the nominee. I, I want people to know that because they assume that the council has so much authority. It isn't, it's the JNC that does. So um, I, I wanna go back, you did apply uh, 2017, 2018. So let's start there and and tell me about um, you know the Superior Court. And as I note for, and and look at all of your uh, resume, you have appeared before SJC, Superior Court, all of them. So you were well qualified to apply to those courts. So tell us about that. Well, I mean, I initially applied at the Superior Court uh, level. I. I spent a lot of time in the Superior Court, and I thought it'd be interesting to be a judge there. Um, I think what I realized once I get into the process, uh, my lack of criminal experience was uh, a real uh, attraction from uh, my candidacy. So, um, and frankly, I had a number of people who read my application said, why aren't you applying for the land court? You're in the land court all the time. And mm -hmm. when I thought about it, I but said, but you did get through 2018 to get an interview, right? Yes. That, and that was to the that was land court. That was land court. court, right? And you got rejected. Well, I, I no, I didn't get an. I guess you got an interview with with uh, Lon Povich, and they were going to there was going to be three openings that year. Was my understanding, uh, Jennifer Roberts and uh, Diane Rubin were nominated. The third opening, which I understood was going to be Judge Long, who's the position I'm. Uh, but, Gen but Jennifer Roberts, that's another story. Yeah. Yeah, but she she was she was confirmed that year, as was mm -hmm. Diane Rubin. Um so um so tell me, um you applied this time for the land court right. and tell me about your experience before the judicial nominating commission. Well, I you know, I had an interview with uh, a number of people. The number I don't recall, it was a lot of people. Um, having gone through it, you don't remember how many people there are. There's 21 that have that uh, that uh, have the awesome responsibility to investigate the nominee, to look at their application, to you know, to call people, to choose who they're going to interview and who they're going to, you know, uh, who they're going to recommend to the governor. So um, you don't recall how many were there. I don't. Anyone? There were a lot. I mean, there was yeah, over yeah. over twelve, maybe over. Well, 15. if you got if well, that you hit the jackpot because yeah. we usually hear eight, ten. Well, anyway, um, so um, now this is through the pandemic. No, no, this was before. Okay, because um, okay, so you did get to the lieutenant uh, lieutenant governor governor to be interviewed. Yes. Okay, so um, okay. Having said that, I I, I do want to make a disclosure which has no. It has no bearing on my opinion. You graduated from Boston College. Two of my four children graduated from Boston College, my son-in-law and two grandchildren. But it has no bearing at <laughs> all, but uh, great school. Uh, I, I am impressed that you've had 32 years. I think that's what the council is impressed with too, because you have, you bring life experience. A lot of times a 40 year old doesn't bring life experience. So um, maybe, let me ask you, okay, if, have you in, since 2018, which is only three years, has there been anything significant in that time that has made you more qualified to be on the land court? I would just say more experience. I've, yeah. I've been before the Housing Appeals Committee now two more times, and so it's a different forum, different issues, and so it's just more experience. Right. Well, I know 40 Bs have been a big issue in a lot of the communities across the state. And um, were you involved in the Stigma Teen Fathers? Uh, as Mr. Flynn uh, testif uh, testified, um, I assisted him uh, behind the scenes in talking about some of the regulatory issues that were relevant. Yeah, that's that's the first time I heard it today. And that's in Waltham and uh, quite controversial uh, to take that land, if people aren't aware, by eminent domain to build, to 
to re to change the location of the high school it really mm -hmm. and they were going to build a new Waltham High School so um it, it, tell me how did you feel um was that one of your most rewarding results well to be fair the result was really Mr Flynn's result but I think you know it was rewarding for me to be of assistance to Mr Flynn and I think what Mr. Flynn in, ended up achieving was uh, was a very fair um, recovery for the Stigma Team brothers. So, well, it was a very controversial uh, situation in Waltham. I know very well. In fact, there were a couple of city councilors that were defeated in that election. So people had strong feelings, right. whether you know they should take the land or they shouldn't. And it's interesting, the two that wanted to were opposed to taking the Stigmatine Fathers land in the building were the ones that were defeated. So, you know, you don't have a crystal ball. You never know how that's going to go. So what was the most uh, rewarding out of the 40B that was so difficult and you felt that it was the right thing and you you were successful? Uh, the most rewarding thing was actually not a typical 40B. Um, a number of years ago, municipalities uh, started suing developers after their projects are completed because they're required, they're limited in what kind of revenue or, or profits they can they can earn from a project. Uh, and, and municipalities started to sue developers alleging that they were skimming profits and unfairly uh, lining their pockets with uh, money that they weren't entitled to recover. Um, and there were a lot of municipalities that were doing that. I had a, I had a client who had done things by the book and the municipality went after them, and it was a it was a very contentious piece of litigation. Went on for a long time. Um, he did not skim profits. And we we were able to establish to a jury satisfaction that he did not, and we won the case. That was an important case for developers uh, in the 40B world. Um, I like your writing. Do you want to tell us about about that case that you 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 um we say. What you said. Which case? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think the one. Um, well, the Carlisle, uh, when you're in the Carlisle Zoning Board of Appeals, um, I know some of the things that came up before you. What was the what was the most um, controversial on the zoning board there? Uh, there was a number of controversial. There were a lot, I know. <laughs> um, I think there, there was, Carlisle was a dry town up until about 10 years ago. Yeah. And when the, the only store in town wanted to get a liquor license, uh, a lot of people objected to it in town. And of course, once he had jumped through all the hoops and was allowed to apply for and, and get a liquor license, there were zoning issues. And so when he came before the zoning board, um, it was a lot of people that were against him. And so those were raucous hearings, packed conference rooms, they went on for hours and days and and so that was and and ultimately he was entitled to do what he wanted to do with his building but it was a it was a raucous hearing that well, I have people to, to release have to say that's great training being on the zoning board yep. you know you're really a, a a target um you know everyone has your witnesses were excellent and they brought up all of the things that you do that they have seen you do and and so well and um, you have such a resume, and uh, there really isn't anything that I could add to ask because, you know, uh, we talk for all that time, but what has been presented here says it all, what, what your witnesses said about you. And, um, and I, I, want, I, I know that Councilor Ionella brought up compassion, and I have said it many times, I won't vote for anyone if they don't have compassion and empathy. And you really have it. I mean, your your personal life, all the activities to care about your community, to take all that time, and for the youth that you work year round, in addition to your law practice, that that is remarkable. And um, you're going to be such a great addition on the land court. And um, I am very pleased that you continued to apply, because I want to tell people. Doesn't always happen the first time. Right. There's a probably someone political that jumped the line, whatever. But 
don't give up. We would have lost you if you did that. So thank you very much. You. And I am going to adjourn this hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Councilors, we are um, currently waiting for the governor. She should be on shortly. Am I excused? No, you can leave. The hearing's done. You, you can sit here. Counselors, Lieutenant Governor is going to join you soon. So just we're in a holding pattern for right now. Hi, everyone. I'm here whenever you are. Here we go. Uh, okay, guys, the meeting's on. Guys. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. Oh. Marilyn. Marilyn. Go. We're in session now. Terry, you're doing a hell of a job oh, today. <laughs> Paul, you're doing a hell of a job today. <laughs> Marilyn, you did a hell of a job that, that here. Yes. Unbelievable. Excellent. Nice. nice and friends. Unbelievable. Quiet over there, quiet. I was kidding you. I was kidding you. No sense of humor. Lieutenant Governor, we're live when you're ready to start. <laughs> okay, everybody's ready? Yes. All right, we are calling our assembly to order, and I recognize Councillor Ionella for prayer and pledge today. Thank you very much. We come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be the best we can be. Amen. Outstanding. Amen. Amen.
I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council Ionella, for leading us in our prayer and pledge today. I recognize Councilor Hurley for a motion to record advice and consent for the financial warrant. So moved. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 I recognize Councilor Duff for a motion to record advice and consent for the pending list of notaries, public, and justices of the peace. So moved, Governor. Second. 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 There's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 I recognize Councilor DePaolo for a motion to record advice and consent for the appointment of Whitney J. Brown to the position of Associate Justice of the Westboro District Court. So moved, Governor. Discussion? There's a motion, there's a second. We second in discussion. Councilor Devaney. Thank you. Um, Lieutenant Governor, I, I want to say that I voted for Whitney 16 years ago for a clerk magistrate position, I knew then that she was outstanding and that she would make a wonderful judge. And when I met with her recently, I asked her, what took you so long? And I am so pleased that she applied and that she has been approved and I'm going to be very proud to vote. And you know what? Her twins were four years old. She has, a, and the other daughter was 11. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, we may begin the roll call. Councillor Hurley? Yes. Councillor Ferreira? Yes. Councillor Jubaville? Yay. Councillor Devini? Yes. Councillor Ionella? Yes. Councillor Duff? Councillor Duff? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor DePaulo? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We have two nominations today. Carol Vittorioso has been nominated to the position of Clerk Magistrate of the Fitchburg District Court, and that's within your district. Councilor DePaulo, do you have a date for this hearing? Uh, yes. The hearing for Carol uh, Vittorioso will be April 14th at 9.30 a.m. Okay, April 14th at 9.30. We also have the nomination of Brendan Moran to the position of Clerk Magistrate of the Worcester Juvenile Court. That's also within your district, Councilor DePaulo. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I'll schedule that for also April 14th uh, at 11.30. Uh, point you. of information, we're going to have one at 9.30 and one at 11, you're saying? No, it's 11.30. That, that's an impossibility. You, you, I mean, you can't even ask questions of a person. That's not, we don't just ring them in and, and ring them out. This is wrong. I can, I can I ask in due respect to you, Lieutenant Governor, if the council will consider the 21st to have the second. No. We just no. did today's hearing in an hour and a half. I'm sorry. I, we just I'm did today's hearing in an hour and a half. Lieutenant Governor, what is it? Yeah, I think, I think we can have, I think the will of the councilor uh, within whose district both of these nominations are in, has proposed the date of April 14th. So the proposals to begin at 9.30 and- 9.30 and- 11.30. 11.30. I, I have said so often that we only should have one on that day. This is the most important day of the nominee's life outside of getting married, having children. And I and to give that person ample time for the counselors to vet this person, they should have one day. And I don't and it, and you know it ne never was like this through the years. And I really, um, in all due respect, I, I I wish it would be reconsidered. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, just for the record. Yes, Councilor Hurley. We have held more than one hearing for all the time that I have been on the council. This is my third year. Um, and if the hearing at 930 goes over right. uh, past 1130, then the other hearing is just delayed until that hearing is finished. And there have been, there was one occasion where I had to actually continue a hearing to the next day, next Wednesday. 
So it's been done all along. Okay. I'll, I will leave it to the members of the council to make sure that you have plenty of time to vet the nominations. Uh, according to Councilor DiPaolo, Carol Vittorioso is scheduled for 9.30 on the 14th, and Brendan Moran is scheduled for 11.30 on the 14th. I believe you have a hearing underway. Uh, thank you for your... It's over. Okay, thank you for, for your efficiency and uh, your hard work today. Uh, I know we are in the midst of uh, holidays. I wish you uh, some peace and comfort. Uh, I know with the Christian holiday of Easter, it's a new beginning. And I wish a new beginning for all of us as we uh, battle through this stage of COVID and more people are receiving the vaccines in the Commonwealth. So I wish you all peace, health, and, and safety. Thank you all very much for your time today. That concludes Happy our Easter, business. everyone. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everybody. Thank you.